Okay, so this is Haku the Bean. Today we are going to r slash entitled appearance. Before I get into this or even tell you to like the video, leave a comment, or subscribe, I'm going to let you know that this is a subreddit with a lot of parents that are entitled. And a part of their entitlement means that they are going to be triggering subjects such as child abuse or discrimination of any sort. In one story of this video, from the uh, title alone, because I didn't actually read them, there is going to be uh, ableism. Anyway, if you like this video, anyway, if you are not comfortable with that, please click off the video. But if you're okay with that, and if you do in end up enjoying this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into this. I don't trust you, so I'm cutting off everyone's Wi-Fi. This has been going on for a while now. My stepdad has had it out for me ever since he met my mom. I was around seven, I think. And always audited me out from his biological kids, my stepsisters. My other stepsis, who was 15, I believe, left me, he and my now 12-year-old younger sister, with my mom and stepdad. Wait, I'm getting sidetracked. My stepdad didn't trust me or my brother with anything on our phones at night or in general. My brother was obviously doing bad stuff. I was using Google most of the time to look up stuff to draw. Mainly Pokemon and Digimon stuff. I don't know how you would know or what you mean by bad stuff, but we're going to continue. He used relaxed melodies at night because I couldn't sleep well. Cuts me waking up just today and confronting myself that about this. Me. Why have you been cutting off the Wi-Fi at night? Said that. Because you're looking up PH all the time. Do you have any proof of that? He just sat, sat there in anger for a second before cutting off all the Wi-Fi again. Which got mom super mad because she didn't know what was happening to it. But knew I couldn't do something like this. After I started talking to you, stepdad says he'll never do it again. Until later the next day. He starts shit all over again. OP, how old are you? And I know that you know the exact number of hours before you turn 18. That's a bad set of that. Well, the comments just are like finding ways to circumvent this clear, er, this weird thing that the stepdad is doing. I imagine that there are going to be a lot more stories from this OP. Because they've had this jerk around since they were seven. Since they're on a social media site, they are at least 14 now. I'm not sure if they are above or under 18 or what is going on. 
but I'm quite sure there's going to be more stories about this particular stepfather and coming from it is OP. Alright, let's get to the next story. Ow, that hurt. <sighs> Grandpa is upset he found out about a dog through Facebook. <laughs> a little while ago, my parents got a new dog. My grandpa found out yesterday. The same way I'll be a couple of weeks later as everyone else. Through the post my parents and sisters have been making on Facebook. We're not too close or in much contact with that side of the family for many reasons. Enough to fill a book about. But he started spamming the comments and messages with, You got another one? When were you planning on telling me? You have X amount now? I can't believe you didn't tell me yourself and such. The kicker, a few days before, he casually announced on the, to the entire family that he has cancer. Through a Facebook post. My dad, his son, had no idea. <laughs> that is so ridiculous. I guess that was a little cameo from Boomers Being Fools. What do you mean I can't kick a paying guest out of that room? I, 31, unfemale, work as a receptionist in a hotel in a small town on the Italian coast. Been doing this job for four years. Never before have we had to endure the arrogance of entitled parents like this year. Ooh, we get arrogant entire parents. This is always fun. <sighs> when booking the say, we make it clear right away that check-in is not possible before 2.30 p.m. The hotel where I work has about 70 rooms, and we are constantly full, so the housekeeping staff needs a bit of time to clean the rooms. Considering that checkout is by 11 in the morning, our house housekeeping staff is amazing, being fast and efficient. But they still need a few hours to clean 70 plus rooms. Fair enough. This year, there have been dozens. Dozens of instances where guests have shown up at 7 a.m. demanding that we give them their room early because we have small children who suffer in the heat. On several occasions, some of these arrogant pricks even suggested that we go and kick previous guests out of bed at 7 a.m. to make room for them and their spawn. How does one even think about suggesting such a thing? Were they raised by wolves? Aren't they disgusted with themselves to even suggest such a thing? What's up with these people and their massive narcissism? Yeah, that is pretty intense. Hmm. Sounds like a lot of writers though. Also, these entitled a-holes scream all the time about how their small troll can't withstand the heat and that they need their rooms immediately. Like, poor planning is my concern. Also, if they can't send the heat, that might be because you, I, I, I see it, it as a damn problem, probably. Then I see them dragging their newborn babies to the beach at noon sharp under the sun in a 40 it, it, it Celsius plus degree weather. Like, are you actually concerned about the safety of your kid or not? And is it really necessary to have a beach holiday in August during a heat wave with such a small child and such poor planning? I am so sick of these folks. They firmly believe that parenthood gives them a pass to be horrible to everybody and have special privileges wherever they go. 
And so our parents are truly making in the world a horrible place to live in. And uh, just last week, I got called on a entertainer, I'm going to say, by one of the East entitled Odd Mommies because I want to upgrade her room for free. Because she had a baby, you know. The hotel was full. She wanted me to kick out another family who had regularly paid for the room with a view just because she thought she was more deserving being a mommy. Homegirl called me an entertainer and Hungarian, thinking I wouldn't understand. The look on her face when I told her in English, I don't really enjoy being called that at madam, was a horrified to say the least. And also, I am not going to repeat this language because one, kind of gives me a little bit of, uh, of the egg, but two, I just don't want you to, uh, 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 to uh, ban me or whatever, you know? And I, wow. Some people are insane. Alright, let's go to the next story. Handicapped people don't deserve a table to eat at in public. What would you have done in this scenario? I'm annoyed. I was shopping at Costco and my blood sugar unexpectedly went low. I'm a type 1 diabetic. I stopped in Costco eating area for pizza and a smoothie. I'm parked at one of the indoor picnic tables sitting in my wheelchair. But I was clearly using the picnic ta table. I didn't want to eat messy food over my lap. Space for eating inside the store is limited and Costco is packed due to it being summer here. Before I knew it, a family of three comes and sits at my little picnic table. Okay, this is already off to an awful start. Oh yeah, by the way, a, this post involves ableism. Clearly. The wife scoffs at me, saying I already had a place to sit, and proceeded to nod at my tiny manual wheelchair. She told me I didn't need the table, and that I should get up and leave so her, at her, family, her and her family would have a place to sit. Apparently, I'm supposed to eat in my wheelchair with no table surface and super messy food. I'm not kidding. Costco has some of the messiest pizza you can eat. Pizza grease gets everywhere when you eat it. Okay. Best response for this is, oh, you have... You can stand. Why don't you just go stand in the corner and eat? If you're worried about a mess, well, you, you should have thought of that before trying to take someone else's table. The woman stood there staring at me like she fully expected me to grab my wheels and roll away. But I had no desire to leave the table that I had found first. And on top of that, I didn't particularly want to sit next to her, her screaming toddler. It was just a great experience. I wouldn't have mind sharing my table if they asked me nicely. It would have been awkward and uncomfortable or, or as hell. Who wants to sit with a bunch of unadvised strangers? I didn't have really good time. One thing that I buy as a female at Invoke and at Costco is feminine hygiene products. So I just found this woman who fully expected me to move. I lifted my gigantic box of feminine hygiene products out of my shopping cart and plot them on my half of the table. They took up a good half of the picnic table because it was a big bulky box of them. And they were clearly marked. There was no mistake in what that box was full of. I smiled at the woman and I told her she could absolutely sit at my table with me. Her little girl read the box label and asked her mom what pads are for. 
And of course she reacts in a way that makes me fear for this girl's future because she's going to feel really grossed out by her body in the future. Well, let's just say that was the end, end, end of that entire woman. The woman gasped in horror and quickly ushered her little girl away from me. The girl was far too young to know what pads were used for yet. Clearly they couldn't sit next to a devil like me. I got to enjoy my unanticipated low blood sugar in peace. Normally low blood sugar makes me feel like absolute crap, but this time I felt quite pleased. Nobody should have to eat their in their a wheelchair. Handicapped people have a right to use the, use the table too. Yeah, what the hell? Sometimes people are ridiculous. Anyway, glad uh, uh, you figured out a, a way to traumatize them back. I do want to get into that. I believe my parents want to control my pregnancy. Possible homosexuality. Oh, Eating disclaimer? Or just weird creepiness? Alright, let's get on onto this. My 22 female parents, 55 female and 62 male, have always been controlling toxic parents. The man I had the baby with, 25 male, isn't the most ideal person I thought I created life with. I'll be fully transparent there. He's not as compassionate as he could be. Although he does try. I was living with him for about six months and moved up to my home state quite recently because him and I were having some issues. Particularly regarding communication and feeling connected. Both of us have feeling stressed out about the situation. Well, that's to be expected as neither of us have navigated this before. Since moving up here, my father has taken possession of my car, deeming it unsafe. In a way, it sort of is. The coolant is black, and I have had an exhaust leak for, or the, um, for almost the entire duration of my boyfriend and I's relationship. Ten months. That angers me because it's not in his name, and he said he'd help with getting me a new car, and then went back on it. Parents aren't together, so I don't really have to deal with him other than not having the car, and he wants to pay it off, off and get rid of it, but would need me there because I'm on the loan. Okay, already a weird behavior. My mother will buy large purchases for my child without my permission, and when I tell her I have a problem with that, she calls me an ungrateful B word. Wow. I feel like I'm talking in like a pack and play, a bassinet. The pack and play I'm personally not comfortable with because me. It doesn't feel sturdy enough for an infant to sleep in. The bassinet had to go back regardless because I did research on it and there was a recall. I want a crib, but I'm not even allowed to pick it out on myself. She also bought a, Davy, a baby doll. That I would say baby doll. Baby ball. That's hilarious. A baby doll to practice because I don't have baby experience. But I think it's ridiculous because you not only... You have the military instinct once you see the baby, but the hospital will show you how to do things. As well as your village will, should you need help. And then when I go out with her to look at various baby items, she first needs to give her two cents on clothing. Which annoys me because it's not her baby. She has three kids. Myself, my twin brother, and my older brother. Believe me, she does not need to relive the experience. I also have to hear daily that I'm going to be a terrible mother because I'm selfish and only think of myself. I just feel like I was robbed of the whole pregnancy experience. I almost struggled to feel happy about it. <sighs> well, 
My parents also think my boyfriend's mother wants to steal my baby because she's had all boys and she made her Facebook cover or photo a picture of my ultrasound. I do find that a bit odd, but I'm not exactly sure if they'd want to break up a family him and I created. As they have been a whole family the entire duration of my, my boyfriend's upbringing, and still are. It feels as though my parents want me to stay up here, get child support from him, and tell him to piss off. That's a bit odd, in general. I mean, sure, I guess... It is a little bit weird that your boyfriend's and mom has a picture of your ultrasound, but I think that a lot of people, a lot of grandparents get really excited when they learn of their grandparents. Anyway, let's continue on. Naturally, I've been doing pretty awful mentally because it's a lot. Pregnancy in itself is a lot mentally, but support makes all the difference. The issue with my parents is they support, but also seems very conditional. I am also told that if I go back down onto be with my boyfriend, that I won't have a family anymore. As in, they will all not talk to me anymore since they think I'm going to get my baby taken away. They mentioned that I won't have my baby and no family, and I'll probably end myself. They also mentioned being scared I'll go back, but they're incredibly rude. I don't know what to do. I'm at 30 weeks currently, and I need to move fast so I have a set plan on where I'm giving birth. Where she's raised, etc. Also, regardless of where I'm staying, I only want him in the delivery room. I don't have a normal mother-daughter relationship at all, and I think she would stress me out the entire time. And I do not need that. Yet, yeah, the last thing a pregnant person needs when they're are, are, are pregnant is peop is anything to is anything stressing them out And sorry to anyone who got offended. I must have worried the motherly instincts part are bad. I might still get hit eight because it is the internet after all. Can't please everyone. For those saying I am complaining, I suppose that's my mistake. I thought this was a subreddit to grant slash ask for advice. I don't exactly have an outlet such as therapy to gain advice, so I want some extra opinions. As far as the boundaries part goes, I've struggled with boundaries my entire life. I've also been a people pleaser or type of person. I'm at the age where I'm learning how to set boundaries with people, and that's okay to do so, especially now. I not mean I don't don't have the instincts when it comes to being a mother. Of course, there's a learning process to be done uh, and prior to having a kid. That's common knowledge before you have one. And I have been doing research, so I'm not blindly going into it. What I meant by saying that was my family acts like I'm not going to bond or know anything about my baby. And I'm going to be awful before she's even born. I'm taking everything in my power to learn what I can right now because I've never done this before. Yeah, they are really giving off an odd vibe. Yeah. <sighs> okay, let's just continue on. That was a little bit heavy. Now, what's this one about? Title Mom shoves me at a theme park. This. Isn't in all that long, but it looks really interesting. And it's the last story for today. 
In time, my mom shows me at a theme park. A few years ago, my family and I went to a theme to, went to a theme park a few hours away. We were waiting in line for a ride. In these lines, there is a chain slash rope line divider, which which creates a couple few spaces between the lines of people. We were standing there, minding our own business, when I saw a little kid, probably two to three years old, trying along the line divider, stopping to say hi to people in line while giggling. All of a sudden, I feel a hot arch shove up, uh, up to my back and shoulder, pushing me to the left, and apparently it was the kid's mother trying to chase him down. No, excuse me, no apology, just steam rolling through everyone. The line was in a pretty enclosed space, but there would still be room to pass on the right, since the child was only playing between the line dividers and we weren't packed in tight. My ankles went fully out, I loudly said, DON'T FUCKING TOUCH ME! Once she caught the child, she mumbled, fuck off, as she came back through. Two minutes later, the kid ran by again, followed by Psycho Mama. This time, she didn't shove me at least, but did give me a stink eye as she dragged the kid back to their point line. I would understand if the kid was running towards something dangerous, but they were not. He was setting feet in front of her and not running away fast. I get that wrangling kids in a theme park can be tough. It's hot, you're annoyed, it can be a lot. Unless someone is literally in danger and you need to push through a car to a crowd to get to them. Never put your hands on a person like that. I rarely e tolerate I kn people I know touching me, much less a total stranger. Get that kid a leash and keep your damn hands off my body. I still find the leash on kids thing so ridiculous. But I guess you do need it to get them um, in leashes. It's kind of crazy. All right, anyway. That was our slash entitled parent. If you liked this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye.